Hello everybody, Richard the Dick Coughlin, 616. After being on YouTube for about a year, it became clear there was an apparent pattern and theme to a lot of my videos that centred around certain issues of rights and freedoms and activism that was geared towards uh, equality and fair treatment of certain groups. One of those was pre quite predominantly homosexuals. In fact, some of my most popular videos have been about them. Some of them have been more educational. This study was called The Top Ten Myths About Homosexuality. Interestingly, none of them include the myth that all gay men have AIDS, fuck children, have impeccable dress sense, and burst into tears every time they see the final sequence for Dirty Dancing. Some of them have been more emotional. You disingenuous, heartless, insensitive, fucking bag of misery. Others have been downright fucking offensive. Even though I wouldn't fucking be worried about that, love, because I reckon most of them are straight, they're just saying they're gay, so you won't fucking be interested. And I always used to get asked by people, why do you do so many gay videos? What's with all the gay vids, man? Well, I'll tell you. At the age of 19, for those of you who have had the glory of seeing me from head to toe, you'll notice that I often on occasion have a habit of dressing and appearing to be what some people might call a bit fruity. This is perfectly fine, it's something I always used to do on purpose. I'm a, I'm a skinny, pasty white guy. I've got all the machismo and testosterone fueled hairy, bollocked, fucking animalistic male tendencies of a, of a piece of boiled celery. I played into that sort of fashion and that kind of appearance of looking like I did. I'm a skinny, I wore skinny tight jeans, I wore skin tight leather tra jackets, I wore vests, I got tattoos on my arms, I had long hair, I that, that or when it was shaved fucking off. I would go out looking as gay as a fucking Christmas tree. And I did this on purpose, because I was always getting called gay. And I don't like to say the word accused. I hear that people say that all the time, I was accused of being gay, as if that's some sort of negative accusation, someone's an automatic label you. You're fucking gay. Yeah? Want me to prove it to you? But one night, when I was walking home, looking particularly spangly, I walked down an alleyway, and that's not a metaphor by the way, I walked down a literal alleyway, and I ended up having the shit kicked out of me by a group of, I think it was four lads, I can't really remember, who had been in a bar looking at me funny purely because of the way I was dressed, of my clothing, of my appearance, of my demeanour. It was of nothing more than that. But as I laid there with my head swollen and my sort of mouth bleeding there and my ribs aching, I kind of had this revelation in my head as to why I think bigotry of any description is the most pointless and destructive and absolutely vile form of human nature. And it is part of human nature. But I'm not going to be honest people who says that bigotry is always learned. I don't think it is. I think it's a natural instinct for us to hate and be fearful and aggressive and be scared and intimidated by that which we view and don't understand. And I knew at that point that no matter what I was, it didn't matter. It's what people perceived me to be. And whether or not I was gay or not didn't matter because I just laid there on the floor knowing that at that moment I was in a position. I had walked a day in the shoes of someone who has to live like that openly in places that are much more hostile than where I come from. I bind the spirits of darkness. I take authority over the principalities and powers of hell. I take authority over you in Jesus' name. And the argument always comes down to, well, is homosexuality natural or is it a choice? Well, if it was a choice, I would have fucking done it by now. I'm 31 years old. I've been bored enough times to fucking get down to the point where I'm bound to have given it a go. So it's not a fucking choice. You cannot say, I was born this way. I don't care what scientists say. But whether it's natural or not doesn't even seem to be an argument to me. It's not an argument as to whether it's natural or not, because whether it's natural or not doesn't fucking matter. What people want to do with each other is their own fucking business. 
But the reason there's so many gay people now is because it's a chemical warfare operation. I have the government documents where they said they're going to encourage homosexuality with chemicals so that people don't have children. In many ways, our bigotry and tribalism that leads to things like homophobia are unfortunately natural, instinctive responses to things. They are things that scare us because we don't understand them and because we've necessarily, we've never been exposed to them enough to fully comprehend what these things entail and who these people who represent this group actually are. The homos don't think people have freedom of speech. This guy's showing you right here what the homosexuals think of the U.S. Constitution. Whether something's natural or not doesn't fucking matter. Because nature doesn't always get things fucking right. Nature fucks things up. We know this. We can, look at, we can look at the world and look at the things, the great things nature has given us and know that nature doesn't get things right. But the difference is, we do not always have to bow down to our nature. We can change our nature. We can learn to deal with our nature if we want to. The sad part is, in the natural world of homophobia and homosexuality, this group outnumbers this group, and this group has decided that this group has to change. We're going to turn now to an issue that has people around the country taking sides this morning, all because of a teenager who seems to have issued a kind of cry for help. Several dozen protesters unite today against what they say is an anti-gay organization. We're here to show them that this isn't the only choice. Shame and fear is not the only choice. His parents enlisted him in one of the faith-based programs which claim to help people reject homosexuality. The programs used to be reserved for adults, but now for teens. And here's this young man's story. They were talking about this program, Love in Action. I thought I was going into something that was going to make my life worse for like ever. When I realized he was being sent to Love in Action, I was scared because, you know, I knew what they were all about. How can you not protest someone not being able to be themselves? We were going to go there every single day that he had to be in the program in order to support him. It's called Refuge, and it's run by Reverend John Smid as part of a larger program, Love in Action. There were protesters outside, and there was a megaphone, and someone was calling my name, and I just thought, oh my gosh. Shame there. It's uh, something that didn't sit very well with me. Knowing that your son, by the age of 30, statistics say that he can either have AIDS or be dead. A lot of what reparative therapists talk deals with stereotypes and not with fact. Some people refer to that as brainwashing. The fact of the matter is, this group has to change and they can but they can only do that if we show them why they need to Matt and I are making signs for a counter protest against the Westboro Baptist Church they're going to be at the Adam Lambert concert tonight and we're going to be there so there's Matt people actually going to the concert <laughs> He's going away now. The Westboro Baptist Church didn't show up, but Adam Lambert did. Yeah. So <laughs> it was awesome. Because these people don't need to change. But when you try and undo people's innate biological fucking nature, it gets pretty ugly. And it gets even uglier when these people start to really, really show their true colours. AIDS rotten, dying, spotted faggots are organizing under the banner of gay rights. We have nothing but hate and contempt for these people. Shouldn't they like take all homosexuals from one city and just put them in the city of their own? We don't need it flaunted. Uh -huh. They're not being persecuted in any way. Oh! The internet has given us this great forum in which loads of people like myself and many others can sit here and we can stand here and tell people and show people that we don't need to be scared, we don't need to be afraid. What are you going to be scared of? What are you clinging on to? Think little remnants of an ideology that was should have died long ago, back from the fucking dark ages of humanity. Uh, that, that you want to cling on to, because you feel that's the one thing that defines you, and if you let that go, God forbid you should, you should acknowledge that you're wrong about something, because that would be acknowledging that your God is wrong. I'm, I'm, I believe in what they believe in, marriage between a man and a woman, not between a woman and a woman, a man to man. 
uh, God designed that in a natural way, in Adam and Eve. And two men can't provide us a child, and two women can't provide a child. And it's not always religious people that are homophobic. I know that. Most of the homophobes seem to be religious. Uh, homosexuals are not looking for the uh, activists, are not looking for the white picket fence. They don't really want marriage in, in the, the traditional monogamous uh, s sense of a lifelong relationship. The reality is that most of these activists are looking to attack the institution of marriage because it is something that was given to us by God, something designed by God, ultimately this is an act of rebellion. And it's not always about changing people's minds, it's about opening new ones. There's a saying, bad ideas don't die, people with bad ideas die. The problem comes into when they pass those ideas on, and I'm not saying you can't change anybody's mind, because I know for a fact I've changed people's minds on this issue, I've had messages from them. But all we can do to fight this, we don't need to ban anything, we don't need to silence anyone, we don't need to legislate, we don't need to make any laws or regulations, and we don't need to forcefully make people stop expressing themselves. We need to do the opposite of that. Well. We brought along, you know, some of our friends who are traveling across the country, uh, so you could talk to them. This is our Sodomobile. We'd like you to come on board. No, I'm not coming on board. Give it a shot. Here they are. No, I'm and not coming on board. Got children. And then the sodomy really began. You don't want me in there. We were breaking laws that Phelps hadn't even heard about. Way to go, guys. Way to go. You're doing good. Don't get too close. We'll have to call the police on you. Because when we do that, and when we come out and encourage others, we will see that we can open more minds than they can close. Whatever has happened, whatever will happen, and whatever's going to continue to happen, I promise that I will do whatever I can to make sure that it gets better. Richard the Dick Coughlin, 616. Good night. May God be less. My father kissed in my face and dipped the tip of his filthy dick in my ass and he split my anus wide open at once and two of his fellow perverts lifted up my dick and made me come in Jerry Seinfeld's face. My father and his buddies destroyed my penis with propane.